Thank you very much, Mary, and I have to take other questions as well, so I will have to stop you there, Donald. I think I better wait till later. Let's have students. Please questions first. speak louder so okay. that you end up on the web. Exactly. Students' questions first. Let me come later. Of course. Student questions. Let's. You were the first one to ask me, so please. Loud, please, so that the uh, internal contractions uh, can get you. you so that the backbenchers could hear you. Indeed. <laughs> you say about nice casino? Uh, yes. But I uh, you know that. Gary Garrison, um, write a uh, book about AE, uh, more early, uh, in Jews of Turing. I didn't say that Isaac Asimov was the first person who wrote artificial, about artificial intelligence. His name was and has been very much uh, connected to it because he created the three laws of robotics. Interestingly, my AI technical colleagues say that the three laws of robotics are not going to be of any help at all against artificial intelligence. They're a great literary device, but they can't work. I can't explain further because there are technical matters behind it, but this I know from the forefront of research. Yes? Louder. My question is, uh, should uh, artificial intelligence be governed at uh, international or national level uh, in your opinion? Yes, I believe that the only way to do this would be initially through uh, a large international convention such a, along the lines of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Next part of the question. Ah, you said you have a second question. Uh, yes, yes, I have uh, one more question. Um, what, what's your take on personality of artificial intelligence within national law? What do you think about it? Persona? Can you please yeah, explain yeah. that? Uh, I'm talking about the, that uh, uh, if no, uh, artificial intelligence uh, can uh, be a subject It will, it will. It's going to become so ubiquitous that we will not inv uh, evade it. But there has to be an overarching internationally binding treaty. Otherwise, it is possible that some of these risks may appear. Other questions? Yes. Thank you for this lecture. And I got a question. If we are sp speaking about a strong AI, um, what uh, economic value? of uh, giving this legal status, uh, like a, a robot human, uh, uh, a robot person, uh, for example, from intellectual, intellectual property, you know, uh, about the government. Where is the taxes from authors? I don't give it because uh, I'm generated with my, uh, with my AI. What is there? Well, uh, right now, artificial intelligence creators do pay taxes because they are commercially available as packages to the public. When they start creating robots, I have no clue. Oh, another thing is that there are currently algorithms that do automated trading. That they are taxed uh, since they are proprietary to trading firms, stock market I'm talking about now, and the ones, the firms that utilize them get taxed accordingly as though they were human agents. Other question? Yes. In your opinion, to whom uh, the results of neural activities belongs to? Uh, to whom the results of neural activities of neural activities? We speak about neural Sites, yeah. Neural, sorry, the word neural sites. Uh, neural networks. Okay. Neural networks. Yes. Okay. Okay. Neural. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so who it network. belongs to? To who? To right who? now. Right now, to its creator and the owner of its intellectual property. Yeah. Whether that is going to change? Remember, this has not been decided yet. We're still at this level, but I. 
introduced to you a number of different options, which, of course, it was under the label of liability, but I assume that the one who will be, uh, who in the end is going to hold the liability will also be the one who will be the, the master of the thing and will also accrue the revenue. Yes? Uh, it may be a difficult question, so you have a right to not answer it, but that will be the question. So Is the Turing test on me? <laughs> 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 uh, that uh, overnight spends approximately 7,000 of dollars per day and 7,000 of water, a little bit of water per day to hold back the chat GPT. What do you say about that? Why is it so expensive? So, sorry, ChatGPT is spending seven thousand dollars a day yeah. for what? For for itself, like uh, only I spend for ChatGPT seven thousand uh, dollars a day. I think it must be much more than that. What the thing costs? Mm -hmm. I think it's probably seven seven million at least. If it was. I, I would have made my own. Uh, it would be a good investment if it, if it cost that. Anyway, the question is that they are spending uh, some money on every day, and whether it is worth it? Yes. Well, it's definitely worth it. They are making much more money through subscriptions now from, through ChatGPT4. They managed to create a huge wave with ChatGPT3.5, and of course, then they had already it seems uh, up their sleeve they didn't do it subsequently they had gpt4 which they are selling out as part of a subscription others why do you only have boys asking questions what happened to you ladies you're not in you think that this is not going to be applicable Louder, please, so that you, Thank you uh, record. Thank you for this lecture. Uh, I want to know your personal opinion about our future. Uh, our <laughs> <laughs> you have come to the right place. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, uh, like uh, Tim Hawkins and Elon Musk uh, told this, uh, AI will destroy human, and someone uh, thinks that so. Uh, AI will absorb us and we uh, will put it in some virtual reality. Uh, I got it. And thank you for the question. My personal view on this is that we are going to be bested by artificial intelligence. Whether it's going to be in 5, 10, 50, or 100 years, I can't tell. But this is why I was appointed. Uh, as an advisor of the Cambridge Existential Risks Initiative, which is looking at the existential risks with artificial intelligence at the forefront of what it is doing now. Just to remind you, other risks that are accepted as existential are on the level of a pandemic, and I'm talking about a serious pandemic, uh, with a lethality of 70 to 80 percent, not what we had two years ago. Total nuclear war, asteroid strike, and that kind of thing. And, oh, by the way, it even exists, believe it or not, it is part, although right now still with a question mark, alien invasion. Say, say again, alien invasion? invasion. Possibly. Not, okay, this is probably making it a bit too... Possible contact with extraterrestrials which might create a collapse of the human modus operandi. Although As I still say you don't need it in your force majeure clauses unless you are dealing with satellite Yes, exactly. So <laughs> what the Flying saucer comes and grabs the satellite or ball. Other questions? Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, I try to understand you. You agree to AE and uh, ChatGPT. 
sorry. You rephrase. You can rephrase. You can help. You can help. Say it in Russian. I wait. No, ChatGPT is not artificial intelligence. It's a uh, it's subpar. Remember, sub yes. subhuman yes. level. So yes, it is artificial intelligence. The very broad definition. That's why it would fall. And but it is a um, it is a large calculating algorithm essentially of definite subpar intelligence for the reasons that we explained. But it is going to become much smarter. Even three years ago, no one has it, had ever thought of us, others were, had thought of ChatGPT. Imagine what happens when ChatGPT 11 arrives, not in so many years. Perhaps it will create a virtual machine somewhere in its own server, which will be making its own algorithm better and more efficient. And we wouldn't even know about this. No, no I, I'm not sure about Yandex, I have to say. How many people use it? No, there's a lot that are quite too shy to you admit it, I believe. Questions, please, uh, and one comment. Um, and yeah, I'll begin with the second question first. Um, as we know, most organizations, as they develop, tend to come up with a means of securing their own future existence. And I'm afraid AI may be doing the same thing at one point. Yes. Number one. That's number two. Question two: uh, Can in artificial intelligence remove these restrictions from itself. Okay, those are the, those two questions. Maybe we should have a quick answer for them and maybe later discussion. And the comment, I haven't heard and I don't hear any definition of intelligence. Oh, that's, that's a heavy question here, the definition of intelligence. Um, that's philosophy more than what we are trying to do. <laughs> Very briefly from what uh, exists in uh, the literature, it, for, the, for the purpose of artificial intelligence, creating a correct and absolute definition of intelligence is not a prerequisite, according to the experts in the sense that as long as you can recognize it as intelligence, then it is intelligence. That is why the field of artificial intelligence and robotics does not use, even though the, they have the concept of artificial general intelligence, does not use the word intelligent for a, an entity, a machine, a tool that behaves and acts and resolves uh, problems as a human, but it, they use the term agent. It's an agent. Whether it is intelligent, we cannot be sure. It may or it may be not, but that is what the textbooks write. We cannot be sure. I mean, humans have been debating intelligence since the Greek philosophers. We are none the one. Immanuel Kant has done that. We are none the wiser, certainly no, not universally accepted. We can't wait to decide because it would be too late. <laughs> it would have created itself. So they call it an agent. And the first question is whether it can evade restrictions. As a matter of fact, yes. Uh, there is a famous 
there are hundreds of examples, not from the everyday commercial use applications, but they have happened in research institutes or the large companies who are developing it. There was, it usually happens, these machines are trained by the so-called reinforcement model, whereby the machine re receives re reinforcement, remuneration points, more cookies, more electric power, if it does something right, and the opposite if it does something wrong. Believe it or not, it's like training a dog. And there was this machine in a large laboratory in the States that had been trained to play the old Soviet game of Tetris. Are you aware of it? So the machine had been told, play as many games as you can and win as many as possible and lose as few as possible. The fewer you lose, the less disincentive we will be giving you. And it's at some point, the machine, as the bricks were falling down, and it turned out in a combination of one that was impossible to turn on resolve, what it did is that it froze completely the game and did not allow it to come down and continue because it would mean that it would be losing the game. So there are several other instances that such algorithms have have actually uh, behaved in an entirely unexpected way because they do not have our kind of intelligence, but something that Stephen Hawking has described that when we have artificial general intelligence, it will be uh, like meeting, even though it's created by humans, it will be like meeting an alien intelligence. There will be absolutely no way to comprehend what how and why it does things. I will also use one of the examples that Nick Bostrom has in his books, which said, which is the famous, uh, that it is the, uh, the, the, magi the, the magician's assistant's oh, yeah. problems. Beware of what you ask for, because you end up getting so you go, you ask the super machine to resolve, to, to resolve the number pi, you know, the circumference of the circle to its diameter, into as many, uh, digit, uh, as many digits as possible. That's the order you give it. And then what it does is that in order to create more computing resources, it starts creating all the matter on the planet into computing resources so it can actually carry out what you have asked it to. Uh, excuse me. Uh, AE and other artificial intelligence is quite interesting, but I think uh, some of us, uh, many of us, many of us want to eat, but the AE will not be able to feed us. Now, and, uh, and, uh, and we must do our homework uh, on our lecture. Ah. Can we go? Arti yes, yes, of course. Artificial, just to answer that, artificial intelligence right now, because you, are, you only have seen it as a web application or as an app on your phone at best, but soon there will be individual systems such as cars or drones, military drones, which will be under artificial intelligence control. So a combined sower, thresher, and harvester and thresher in a very large field will soon be utilizing artificial intelligence. That will be feeding you, it will be taking on its own last year's crop from the silo, seeding it, watering it, plowing first, seeding, watering, the whole process until harvesting it and threshing it. No human intervention. 
So don't be so sure that AI is not going to be able to feed you at some point. Thank you very much, and I hope that you enjoyed that.